I started putting things on my credit card and I'm like, oh, I don't know if I can pay that off. I did want to show you guys what is in my credit card because this is a very transparent channel and this is my money diary series. Oh my God, this is like scary to share, but it. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I feel like it has been a hot minute since I did a sit down video. And this might be the first time you are seeing the space sort of furnished. I know that I created a video all about moving into this space. If you haven't seen that, I will link it over here. Kind of a work in progress studio that has just been a labor of love over the last few weeks. If you are new here and you're like, what are you talking about? Hi, my name is Reza. I talk all things personal finances. Sometimes I talk about luxury goods and I also talk about entrepreneurship and my small business. I recently moved into this office space slash studio space. I wanted to just sit down and talk to you guys all about finances when renting out a space like this, the furniture and all of that. I also want to talk to you guys about credit card debt. So this video is really going to be a continuation of my money diary series and this is just kind of a heart to heart and kind of sharing with you guys my experience and really trying to normalize credit card debt and like the realities of life and it's just going to be a chatty video i wanted to do this video before i did my monthly money reset for april because i feel like this video will explain a lot we're also going to be talking a little bit about my bonus for my corporate job so yeah there's just going to be a bunch of topics to kind of go over so that it's it's not all jam-packed in that monthly money in April and yeah let's get started I don't even know where to start but maybe we'll just start at the beginning of this month so March 1st was when I received the keys to this office space all throughout this month I have just been trying to make sure that I get myself organized and moved in here as soon as possible and the reason why I wanted to do it as soon as possible is because I wanted to make use of the space I don't know if I mentioned this in that previous video but the rent for this space is $1,150. I think it was actually $1,250 initially, but I did negotiate that rate. And when I first heard that price, I wasn't sure if I could afford it on a monthly basis just because I have lots of other expenses. I just wasn't sure if it was in the budget. I also just got myself a mortgage. So there was a lot of thoughts and feelings around moving into a space and if I could afford it realistically. I hummed and hawed about it for a couple weeks and there was something in me of you should try it and i kind of calculated i signed a one-year lease how much i would i guess lose out if i end up having to move back and i think it was around like thirteen thousand or fourteen thousand inclusive of taxes inclusive of insurance let's say it's fourteen thousand dollars of me just giving it a shot and me investing in myself once i was able to kind of calculate that price i was like okay do i have fourteen thousand dollars and am i willing to lose that essentially if this doesn't pan out and i eventually got myself there there was a lot of limiting beliefs which i did reference in my previous video I don't know imposter syndrome and owning the space like who am I to have a space like this I could theoretically still continue to work from my den in my bedroom but anyway I got myself there just after like coaching myself talking to my therapist talking to friends etc etc so that has brought us to this space which I currently rent for $1,150 a month and the other cost to the space that I did think about is furnishing it I had the idea of creating this more of like a studio space as well as a working space so as you can see I did have a couch here and just like a plant behind me just to kind of create this ambiance of like this is a space where you can create content and shoot content for your business also for YouTube so I felt really good about it being dual purpose and not just a place for me to pack and ship orders from so you can't see but behind me is a packing table a shipping table and behind me is where I create content but anyway going back to the point of having to furnish the place I really did try to stick to a budget my budget to furnish this place is five thousand dollars and that includes the sofa, the rug, literally every the plant, everything that you see here, all of the furniture, I told myself I would give myself $5,000 to furnish it. So that would then take my overall total, if we're still thinking about that 14,000 to now, let's call it 19,000 to $20,000. That would be like the overall cost. It's just really interesting how many things you don't really take into consideration and all these like little costs that pop up because as I was setting up the place, I realized, oh, 
wait, I need internet. And now that's $50 a month that comes off. And it was just something that I never thought about. I realized I have these really big, beautiful windows, but in the summer it gets really hot. So I actually need blinds too. And again, something that I just like never factored into. It's just the realities of kind of taking it one day at a time and just kind of seeing it from like a small business owner perspective. Like I actually don't just have everything together and I can't think everything and know everything that's gonna come and you just need to kind of deal with it as they come so anyway i'm just kind of learning that and we're only like a couple weeks into having this space and i'm already having these realizations but the other thing that i wanted to talk about today which kind of perfectly segues into this my finances and credit card debt i am proud to say that i don't have any debt other than obviously my mortgage and obviously my car payment which i've already shared my thoughts about how i think about those things in many of my videos before so you guys can refer back to those if you want i don't have credit card debt or like consumer debt as they call it and i also don't have student loans debt because i've already paid that off in my early 20s but credit card debt is something that is such a slippery slope and it's something that i never ever ever want to get myself into what i'm realizing is that credit card debt is so normal and i'm not saying like you should have credit card debt but it's just sometimes you can kind of like fall into that so I'm not in credit card debt because I always try to pay the credit card bill in full every single month. I don't know how to put this, but just having to furnish the place, know that I did not do it all because I had savings and all of that. I put a lot of this on my credit card and it's not something that I can pay off right away. So my strategy for using my credit card is that I always want to pay it off by the time that I get the bill. This time, I don't know, there was just something about like wanting to get this place fully set up immediately or right away because I wanted to start using it right away that I started putting things on my credit card and I'm like, oh, I don't know if I can pay that off. The way that I'm trying to do it is I strategically bought the couch a little bit later so that when the bill comes, I'll have the money and I'll let you guys know where the money is gonna come from. But I tried to work backwards from when I am getting my bill to when I'm getting paid from my job to be able to pay for all of this. So all of that to say, where is this money coming from? Every single year I get a bonus actually that's not true i don't get a bonus every single year i think we didn't get one during covid but having a nine to five i have a bonus that gets paid out to me yearly and that bonus will depend on the performance of the company as well as my individual performance so it's not first of all guaranteed every year but also it fluctuates just depending on how the company performs and how i perform over the last couple of years i have been getting that bonus and for the last couple of years i've been spending that bonus on material goods specifically a designer handbag. And this year, it's really interesting because it's not that I don't want to spend it on a designer handbag, it's just that I want to spend it more on being able to furnish this place, which is something that I've never had before. I don't know, like I think my priorities had just changed this year, obviously, like I just want to grow my business and I know that designer handbags can wait. That's kind of where my head is at and what I want to spend my money on, but the bonus will hit my bank account on April 12th. I have enough time to wait for that bonus before my bill comes. So I think I did time it okay. What I'm kind of going through right now is having such a large amount sitting in my credit card. And at this current moment, on March 22nd, not having the money to pay it off because I'm kind of waiting for that April 12th to hit. And I don't think I've ever done that. Like anytime I spend on my credit card, I know that I can pay it off right away, but at this time I can't. And it's just kind of like an uncomfortable feeling because like literally anything can happen. So yeah, I don't know. I kind of like pre-spent my bonus a little bit, which is not like the proper way of doing it. Like you should just wait for the bonus to hit and then spend it. But basically I spent money that I didn't have and it just feels so uncomfortable for me because yeah, like who knows what can happen. So that is the current situation. I have a plan to pay it off, but I'm kind of waiting for that April 12th date to hit. I did want to show you guys what is in my credit card because this is a very transparent channel and this is my money diary series. So this is a judgment free zone. But when I say that my credit card is very high, it is very high. So I'm happy to share what that number is. I also have two credit cards because one is for my business expenses and one is for my personal. So my personal isn't that bad and I know that I can pay off my personal. My personal right now has $1,532.07 on it. I 
again, not bad, something I can pay off. But my other credit card, oh my God, this is like scary to share, but it is sitting right now at $11,355.71. That is the highest amount on my credit card. And yes, I have a plan, but I don't have the money right now, which is kind of like the scary part about this. The other thing as to why my credit card bill is so high is because I did book some travel. I booked it using my platinum card that you just saw because my, the platinum card has a lot of perks when you book travel with it. So obviously that's not a business expense, but I just wanted to use that card so I can use the benefits of the platinum card. I did ended up booking my flights to Spain and Toronto. So if you have been following my channel, you would know that one of my goals this year is to travel to Spain. So I paid a lot of it through credit card points, which is great. The flights have been kind of taken care of, but in terms of like Airbnbs and hotels, that was still paid in full price. I might do a deeper dive on this in my April monthly money reset if you guys want. And we've also decided while we are on our way back. We are gonna stop by in Toronto to see our family. If you didn't know, I'm also from the East Coast. Um, my family and my partner's family is there. So we're probably gonna spend about a week there before heading back to Vancouver. And that is gonna happen at the end of May. So I'm really excited to share more about that trip. Let me know if you guys have any recommendations for Spain. It will be my first time going. We're going to Madrid and Barcelona. Yeah, and I'm just, I'm just really, really excited. Again, the money for that trip is going to come from my bonus this year. I just kind of wanted to share these thoughts because sometimes, I don't know, sharing it makes it feel like you're less alone. I know I love when these types of videos pop up on my TikTok page of people sharing how they spend their money and kind of like how they think about money as well. So I hope this helps you, this helps someone. I hope this helps kind of normalize using credit. I don't know, just like open up the space, my financial insecurities and I'm not perfect. And I also do things that that probably aren't prescribed by the finance gurus. But yeah, I kind of just wanted to share this. I hope that at least one of you guys resonates. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. But yeah, I will probably do more of a deep dive into that. And it's been so nice to catch up with you guys because I feel like I haven't been active really on YouTube. So thank you so much for being patient with me as I set myself up here. And I will see you in my next video. Bye you guys.